ask you to turn your attention to a place that we already are studying. Uh, we're in the book of Genesis. We uh -huh. honored the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King by reading from chapter 37. But I want to go to the final chapter of the book of Genesis, chapter 50. We will be on that lesson on Tuesday. And I want to go there today and give you a sneak preview Amen. of coming attractions. Amen. 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 Genesis chapter 50. When you have Genesis chapter 50, say Amen. 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 There are 29 words in this text that I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 50. And it's found in verse 20. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. And it says this, but as for you, ye thought evil against me. I like another but this show. It says, but God meant it. Say it unto good. To bring to pass as it is. Look what he say, this day, to save much people alive. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God is eternal. Lord, stand in this weakened vessel. Remove all of the hindrances of my carnality that I may point to you, O oh God, that every word that is shared be a word that is a pathway, a beacon light, to the bright morning star. Have thy own way. Yeah, yeah, In yeah. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. We're just grateful to be here. And, amen. Uh, let me remind you that we started our journey part two. Our journey part two. Uh -huh. In Genesis 1. Yes. And 1. Same place we started journey part one That's right. and, and, and we started with the word of God yes, sir. speaking to us declaring in the beginning God yes, sir. am I clear yes. in the beginning, uh -huh. God. In the beginning God. God in case you forgot the Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven yes, sir. Yeah. and the earth yeah. first of all it is absolutely significant child of God that the Bible begins with God, Amen. but it's also important that you understand your life yes. begins yes. with God. Amen. Which shows us the essence of God. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, God. If there is one thing the Bible tells us right off the bat, it is about God. Amen. It is about the sovereignty of God. It says, in the beginning, God. That means when nobody was his company keeper, God stood by himself. Somebody ought to say amen. So don't let people fool you with the nonsense of this world. God is free. In the journey, uh, you will abort it, you will abandon it, unless we surrender into the reality and the finality that God is. And that's all I that's need to all say. Right. God is. God is. God is. You, you ought to be able to declare in your own life that God is. God is. See, that's the blank check that God writes from heaven and presents to man. He said, I am that I am. God lets us know that, that this thing that we begin to understand, that it is all about God. Amen. Can you say that with me? It is all it's about all God. God. So if it's all about God, don't get mad at me. It's not about you. And it's not about me. Because all, Big Mama said, just means all. When you get all, there's nothing left. 
And if it's all about God, let's get out of our feelings and our flesh for a minute Amen. so we can take this journey with you. Uh, you, you won't, your feelings won't get hurt in church if you know it's all about oh, God. Right. If you came here because God called for you, right. and you slept in slumber, God already had dispatched an angel to guide you and guard you as you came to church today. Somebody ought to say thank you. You didn't make it here on your own. It's the better drivers that have had accidents and they won't make it home today. God escorted you here because he has something here waiting on you. And somebody ought to tell God thank you. On the second Sunday in January of a brand new year, God had a plan for your life. God had a purpose for this time that he allocated and told you to come see him. Am I clear of it? Our universe is what science calls a heliocentric universe, which means it revolves around the sun. And some of you have been with me. I told you this already. A heliocentric world, it means that the sun don't move, but everything moves around. And I, I'm preaching better than you catch it right now. But that's the S-U-N. That's that euphorical ball that sits up in the sky that causes us to be warm. And then it goes and peaks hides itself as we yeah. see the revolution of the earth and the moon shows up to make sure that the tide don't run over the land. Somebody ought to say, God in his infinite wisdom knew how to put things together that man can't even mess up. Yeah. Our universe is heliocentric. That the planets revolve around the sun. The church should be God-centered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That we need to revolve around God. Yeah. Oh, your whole life should be predicated on God's agenda. Y'all yeah. mad at me already. And not your own. The, the, the problem is that we're not always heliocentric, or most of you never heard of that word. Uh, most of us are not God-centric. We egocentric. You think everything evolves around you. Somebody got an attitude right now because somebody didn't text you. Somebody going to get mad on your birthday if it hasn't passed, it's on the way, and somebody's not going to say happy birthday. I've seen the egocentric minds of the church when we forget to sing happy birthday. And you leave out saying they sang it for joy. Right? Amen to people. We have to quickly begin to understand that an egocentric world causes problems for the church. Yes. Yes. And also the church causes problems for an egocentric person. Right. Amen. Ego. E-G-O. Yes. Real simple. Easing God out. Yes. And even in the church, I can tell you, the ego of man has pushed God to sure. the back burner. Yeah, yeah. That's the reason you could see what you seen that, that, that Brother Bishop Marshall was doing what he was doing. That, that on New Year's Eve, it looked like a party instead yeah. of yeah. worship. Yeah. Wow. Somebody say amen. amen. That, that, that's the reason I'm very, very in tune with what songs going to be saying here. Yeah. They yeah. must bring worship yes, to God. Yeah. It must be God-centric songs yeah. and not ego-centric. Yeah. They can't be about us showing off because us got a little voice because oh, oh, every good and perfect gift yeah. came down from the Father of life. Hey, man, so, uh, uh, God is the giver of those gifts. Yeah. Uh, and now for some years, we have seen the problem that, that the earth is, is, is becoming contaminated because of the behavior of man. Yeah. One of the big problems people have is that, that they have made some kind of mistake about the spiritual center of the universe. We, 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 we have forgotten that it is about the sun, mm -hmm. but it's the one that Jesus is. Mm -hmm. He's the only begotten son of God. Amen. And that's what the church has to evolve around. That's the reason the Holy Spirit is here, to keep us on track. Yeah. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. The Holy Spirit is to get you back out of the ditches of life. Yeah. Oh, amen. You missed it. Uh, David, if he was here this morning, he would come in and be a witness and say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I was in a ditch. He said, but uh, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, 
when they come with me. Amen. Well, if David couldn't make it, let, let, let me see what, what, what our text would say about this. The journey is one of not mere understanding. It must be a journey of faith. Uh, too many people want to understand God instead of follow God. Wow. Amen, somebody. You get on planes and you don't know aerodynamics. You don't know nautical uh, understanding, but you'll get on a boat and go cruising. Amen. What, what, what we're trying to get you is to understand that this Bible is to get us to have faith in the wonders of God. Somebody say amen. Amen. Uh, this Bible is to get you to have faith in the work of God. Yeah. Keep pushing, I think I will. This Bible is to get you to have faith to obey the will of God. Amen. But most of all, this Bible is here so you can have an example of the word of God. Amen. I want you to understand that there are some things that are going on in this text that I want to share with you. As we prepare to move from the opening statement of the Bible to the beginning, God and continue this journey of a lifetime. Today we are on the closing thought from the book of Beginnings, the book of Genesis. Uh -huh. And with all the patriarchs and matriarchs we have met yeah. on this journey so yeah. far across these 41, verse 42 chapters you've already covered, and by Tuesday you will be through with the book of Genesis. Uh, that, that we are here now standing looking at one of the real patriarchs of this mm -hmm. Bible, yes. the personhood of Joseph. That's right. Uh, Joseph is a patriarch that is what's called a typology of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. it, it, he's a typology because there's some similarities between his life yes. and the life of our Christ. Yes. And, and so uh, to honor one last time, uh, fallen brethren, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, that the tag for this sermon today is my dream deferred is not my dream denied, part two. Somebody say it with me. My dream, my dream deferred, deferred is not my dream denied. Amen. So somebody here, you've had some dreams and they've been deferred. It seems like they're, 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 they're taking longer than you would have thought to get here. But because it's been deferred, it is not denied. God wants you to understand today that if you continue on the pathway you're going, that he still has that blessing waiting on you. Somebody, you're pulling a burden, but you're on the way to a blessing. Say yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, 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 I, I, I love this. Langston Hughes. Brother Cherry, yeah. you, you know about him. Yeah. He was called the Poet Laureate of Harvard. Yes. Right. Uh, I hope they still teach it that in school, if not teach it at home. And he wrote a poem, and just like the, the verse we read had 29 words, he has had 11 lines. Mm. And if you add 2 and 9, you'll still get 11. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. so, so, so watch this. This is what he's, he, he starts it with a question, Mother Mo, and he ends it with a question. He says this, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Huh? Does it fester like a sore and run? Does it stink like rotten meat or the crust and sugar over like syrupy sweet? Or maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it merely explode? Uh, spending time with this lesson, and I know you already know that this Joseph, I can run and give you the cliff notes, he spent some time in a pit. Yes. He spent some time in Potiphar's house. Yes, he, he spends time in prison. Yes. But then he spends time with the promise. Yes. Somebody ought to say amen. Yes. You, you, you may be in the pit right now. It may seem like you're in a deep hole, yeah. but I tell you, you, trust God. You may be in Potiphar's house. You may have a job where you feel like a slave. They may be mistreating you and treating well, no. you less than what you think. 
You may be under the auspices of a liar that is blaming you for stuff you haven't done. But I mean, that's part of what's happening. Or you may be in prison. You may be locked up in a bad situation. Yeah, yeah. You say, uh, yeah. it doesn't mean bars. You, right. you can be in the prison of your mind. Yeah. You can be in the prison of your emotions. And I, I don't lock people out, not let not let nobody in. Yeah. You can be in prison and look like you're free. But I'm glad that I got one word for you. Who the son makes free yeah. Yeah. is free indeed. That there is no pit, there's no powerful house, and there is no prison that God cannot free you from. Yeah. Uh, 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 I'm glad one reason I love the account of Joseph's life is due to the fact that he is clear the Old Testament picture of my Christ. Wow. He lets me know that God is going to make a way for it. That it may seem dark and dim, you may be discouraged and in despair, but if you could just hold up, God will make a way for you. I, I, I love that we discuss the aspects of Joseph's life. And, and most of you remember that the longest series I preached here was in 2008. We preached 10 weeks talk on Wednesday, so 20 times we came together to talk about Joseph. Uh -huh. and, and, and the tag of it was, I am Joseph. Yes. And, and, and that's how I want yes. you to feel today. I want you to feel like you got on the coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. I, I thank Sister Speed and, and Lamisha for this wonderful role, yeah. but, but the role means nothing. The robe wasn't the key to everything. It brought right. jealousy, but it was the man <laughs> in the robe that makes it. What I'm trying to say, it ain't what you have on, it's who's in what you wear. Somebody heard what I said. We're so concerned about what we have on, and God is concerned about who's in what you wear. Well, I, I just should have blessed you, and y'all should have said, that means God is concerned about me. I'm concerned about clothes, but I'm glad that God Sister Dotley is concerned okay. about me. Yeah. I'm glad that when nobody else see is concerned about me, I've got a God that's still concerned yeah. about me. When everybody turn their proverbial backs and walk away, leave me in a pit, lock me in Potiphar house, put me in prison, I'm glad that God still fits his pit. Somebody ought to say amen. I'm glad that God will stop by Potiphar's house. I'm glad that God will come into a prison to free the captive. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, uh, watch this. In Psalm 118 and 23, here's 11 beautiful words to take with you. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous huh, in our eyes. I don't care what's going on, you ought to be able to touch yourself and say, this is the Lord's doing. Yeah. But don't nobody want to be bothered with you. You tell them I say it, my shit, the Bible say, this is the Lord's doing. Yeah. Yeah. That is marvelous. Yeah. 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 I, I would like for us to watch this thing of Joseph. I'm going to give you the three points early in case you take a nap. First, he recuses his position. Then he recognized God's providence. Then he remembers God's promises. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Come on up here. The, 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 the hard one is the first one. Mm -hmm. He recuses his position. Yes. Verses 15 through 19 in his 50th chapter, he does something that I think is difficult to do. He has some authority and he takes it off. See, that's why I told you he resembles Jesus because yes. Jesus had ultimate authority in divinity and he unzipped it and took it off to come and get humanity. I love this about Joseph. He recuses his position. He has every reason, every right to punish his brothers. I'm trying to help some siblings up in here right now. But, but, but instead of him punishing his brother for putting him in a pit, they called him to go into slavery, being part of prison. They wind up in prison got interpreted the dreams of prisoners that still got up for an extra two years. He learns to do something that it would behoove every child of God to do. He recuses his position. That is a legal term, and let me make sure you get it. He excuses oneself 
from a case because of potential conflict of interest or a lack of impartiality. There are some people that I can't deal with because I'm not going to be impartial. I still got some memory. I ain't got where Paul was at when he said, forgetting the things which are behind me, I press towards the mark of the high call of Jesus Christ. I'm still paying some places. Y'all play to me. Thank you, darling, for not your head. I still got a petty gene in me that God is working on. I still got some folk that if I see them today, I ain't going to be that happy. Y'all yeah. play too much like y'all holier than I am. At least I'm honest enough to say it. Yeah. There are some folk that, 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 that it's hard, Brother Greg, for me to pray for. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. you sit up here looking at me petty crocker and petty... <laughs> Petty pentagrass like y'all not petty. <laughs> Say amen up in here if you can. But, but he does what God wants you and I to do. He recuses himself. Yeah. He steps back and says, I, I can't deal with him right now. Yeah. I remember the smell in the dirt. I remember being put in the pit. I remember my clothes being stripped off of me. Somebody, you can't help somebody because you remember. Does God have to give you spiritual amnesia before you stop? Does God have to take you to the Alzheimer's unit before you will forgive somebody? Come on up in here. It, it's, it's hard right now. But this is the hardest thing he has to do. He must recuse himself. I'm not going to read them verses. Sister Hyde got them on the board. And, and why, why, why would it be hard? Because he was attacked. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Right. He was attacked because he shared some truth. Yeah. Yes. Am I clear? Yeah, Somebody up here, you you you, you done got attacked. Yes. Not because you told a lie. Because you told the truth. There are yeah, yeah. some folk that, 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 that I watched a movie called A Few Good Men. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I watched Jack Nicholson tell them, he said, you can't handle. Yeah. He was attacked. The Bible reveals Joseph was a favorite by his father. Yeah. From the time of his birth, Jacob already had ten sons born unto him. Mm -hmm. Joseph was his eleventh son, and he was the son of his old day. Yes. And, and, and I hope Shayla watches. Be careful when we take children and put them places God didn't set. My, my, my. Be careful when the child becomes too important. Yes. Uh, Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah, I'm going to let that settle in the room. Yes. We, we, we're to love our children, but we're not to cherish them. Yeah. 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 So, so, see, Hannah tried to teach you a lesson when she prayed from a yeah. barren womb. Yes. Uh -huh. And God delivers her a child. Yes. She, the first thing she does, she takes the child and she gives yes. it back to God. Y'all yes. yes. watch Roots. Yes. See, that used to be the way we would do when the child was born. The first thing we did was give it back to the Creator. Now we take the child and forget the Creator. He was attacked because his father put him in a position to be hated. And not only was he attacked, he was accused. Once in Egypt, Joseph was purchased by Potiphar. And the Bible says he found favor uh, yes, sir. in the pit. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Then the Bible had the audacity to say he found favor in Potiphar's house. How, how do I find favor with a liar? How do I find favor when somebody is accusing me of rape? Huh? Yeah. I find it because God gave it. See, see, you got to be able to see God's gifts no matter where they show up. Because not only did he find favor in the pit, find favor in Potiphar's house. Reverend Chair, I know you ain't going to like this part because he's an advocate about this mass incarceration. But, but, but the Bible said he found favor in prison. Uh, somebody ought to say man up in here. Only God can go inside locked walls and bars and give you favor in prison when you're innocent and shouldn't even be there. I don't need an innocence program. I just need God on my side. Somebody ought to say that he was attacked, he was accused, and then after he helped some prisoners, he was abandoned. That's right. 
Something, somebody, I'm trying to help you to help somebody they forgot where their blessing came from. Amen. Amen. Huh? Yeah. You helped them when they were down and now they got two cents and a nickel and they forgot about it. Huh? But, but, but here's what I want to remind you. that, that, that uh, Come here, Joseph. You didn't interpret the dream. God interpreted it dropped it off. That's right. That's right. See, see, when you leave church with that much understanding of what was preached, don't run around beating your chest about what you got. Because if the Holy Spirit, Sister Challenge, don't give it to you, you will leave here empty. Right. Amen. 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 He was abandoned. He was accused. And he was attacked. So he had to recuse himself. See, watch this. Being their hated, now he's becoming their helper. Yes, that's right. That's right. Being their hated, that's right. and God is trying to help you to become their helper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should sit down and wait yeah. about five minutes until you think about that person that's hated on you and they need your help, and you're saying, ain't no way in the Bible that I'm going ready to help them. Yeah. After all that stuff, they, they think, I'm getting ready. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. Remember that this is a God-purpose yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. That, that he had to recuse himself. Sometimes you got to step back till you get clear. Yeah. <laughs> there are some circumstances that just not I'm too close to yeah. that I don't have any objectivity about it. Yes. Amen. I'm trying to help a few of y'all. We, 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 we threw the first point. He recuses his position. Being their hated one, now he's becoming their help. Yes. That's the first charge you get from this text. Wow. <laughs> that there's a hater that needs your help. Yes. That if there's a God that dwells in you, yes. you, you, you got to help us. Because remember what we said, it ain't about you. Amen. I ain't got to go back and read through that part, do I? It ain't about you. It's about the God in you. Amen. How much can God use you? God can only trust you when it's sunny. Uh, Noah said you better learn to let God trust you when it's raining. <laughs> he, 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 he recuses his position. Verses 20 and 21, my second point, he recognizes God's providence. Yes, sir. Okay, here it is. Verse 20 he says, But as for you, ye thought it evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now get the word, Sister Matthew, now. now. Verse 21 now. says, now. now. Therefore, Fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little. Yes. And he comforted them yes, he and spake kindly unto them. That's right. See, when you recuse yourself, yes. then you're able to look and see that this ain't my stuff they asked yes. for anyway. Yes. Somebody in bad relationship with God because you hold it on the things that he told you to let go of. So, see, you can never get a harvest if you keep it in your hand. In order for there to be a harvest, you must trust that what God has given you has what's in it that can produce what you need after. So, so, see, it ain't, the seed ain't no good until it goes in the earth and then the sun calls it up, the water causes it to thicken and grow up, and then God causes it to be what it should be. The first thing we have to understand is that he recognized God's providence is God's protection. While his brother's hatred for Joseph drove them to extreme measure, God protected him against their attack. Potiphar's wife made false accusations, yeah. yes. and yet God protected Joseph from the yes. punishment All that right. would have taken his life. Yeah. Through every occurrence of Joseph's life, yeah. God protected him. Yeah. Now, now, I need you to hear me. Yeah. Through every occurrence of your life, yeah. somebody ought to say amen. amen. You would have never made it out of that last incident yeah. if God had protected yeah. you. Somebody ought to say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I'd have never made it. 
that, that, that last crazy person you was dating would have killed you. Yeah. That last accident you wouldn't have walked out of. Amen. God's protection is the first thing. John 10, 28 and 29 says this. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. He is, Reverend Jerry, my shield and my buck. He is my high tower and my fort. He is the one who protects me against all the assaults of the enemy. And not only is he my protection, God is my provision. And Joseph faced being sold into Satan, falsely accused and in prison. It may have appeared that God had abandoned him, but in fact, God was always near, making provisions for Joseph, and providentially removed Reuben to spare Joseph's life. He gave Joseph favor in the eyes of Potiphar, then favor in the keeper of the prison. Behind the scene, God is always in control, orchestrating the events of my life. God is my keeper. God is the one who makes the way for me. I'm glad mama told me when I was young, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Somebody ought to know that God is my provider. I will look unto the hills from which cometh my help. I understand today that all of my help cometh from the Lord. He that made the heavens and the earth. He that neither sleeps nor slumber. Somebody ought to say God is a way maker. He is bread in a starving land. He's my rock in a weary land. I ain't got time for y'all today. God is my provider. He is my Jehovah God. Not only is he my protection and my provision, but God is my promotion. God is my elevator. God is the one who's going to take me and elevate me over the circumstance. If you've been sick and you got out of sickness, God is the one that elevated you over. The way COVID is still spreading around and we up in here, you ought to tell God thank you. Now, no doubt there were times when Joseph wondered if he would ever be released from prison. Somebody here today, you wondered if I'll ever get out of the prison of loneliness, sadness, sorrow, suffering, and somebody may be even sick. Yeah. Oh. Likely he questioned why all this had befallen yeah. him. And yet Joseph remained committed to God. Yeah. He yeah. served the Lord in the midst of great adversity, yeah. trusting God when he had no idea what God was doing oh. or how God would handle his circumstances. Eventually, after two long years in prison following the butler's relief, Pharaoh had a dream that couldn't be interpreted by any of his advisors or magician. The butler, maybe seeking personal advantage, remembered Joseph and told Pharaoh about it. Somebody's talking about you and they think they're harming you, but you ought to thank God they get ready to help you. If somebody behind the scenes and think by throwing your name up, they're going to get you in trouble. But they get ready to cause you your great promotion. You ought to tell somebody thank you. You ought to understand that it's a reason that hater and elevator rhyme. Because some of my haters have been my greatest elevator. Joseph does not pretend that, 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 that this thing that's going on doesn't bother him. When he first sees his brothers, it begins to move in him. He remembers what they've done. Yes. But then he remembered what God has done. Yes. And I want to warn somebody, don't let what people do cause you to forget what God has already done. I need three people to say amen and I'll make four. I can't let nobody, no, no, nobody stop me from realizing how good God's been to uh, If you've ever been sick, and you had to go to the hospital and have an operation. All the people that love you, they got to stay in one area. 
they can't go no further. Yeah. But I'm glad God already is back there yeah. sterilizing the, 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 the surgical work. Yeah. God is making sure that everything is right for us. You tell Shayla the doctor didn't do it, but Jesus is the one who delivered that baby. That I, I know he did. The, the promotions of life that we have comes from the Lord. God uses valleys to make them our victory. Somebody yeah. ought to say amen. amen. Joseph's life reached the point where his brothers needed him. And God had to encourage Joseph that, that, that not to let his own self get in his way. Yes, we have to realize that we can't give evil <laughs> for evil. Amen. I'm done. Lord help. Verses 22 through 26. After we've taken a look, we've been able to see that we have to recuse ourselves yeah. from some situations. Mm -hmm. There are some situations that somebody is in in here, and long as you stay in that situation, mm -hmm. you'll be in that situation. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Amen. I, I, that, that's yeah. the deepest statement I have for you. <laughs> that as long as you stay in it, you'll be in it. Yes. God is calling you out of it today. He's saying recuse that position. Yeah, yeah. Recuse those presents. Recuse all of the property and trust the Lord. Uh -huh. Kimmy, I hear him say from the pen of Solomon, trust in the Lord yeah. with all thy heart. Oh, yeah. And lean not to thy own understanding. Yeah. In all thy ways acknowledge yeah. him. Yeah. And he shall, he shall direct thy path. Yeah. We see that he recuses his position. And then the next thing that he had to do was that he had to get into this position that you and I need to be in. You need to recognize this God's promise. That's right. That everything I have belongs to the Lord. Yeah. And see, we okay with that when it's problems. We want God to take our problems. But what about when it's your property? We don't want to offer that to the Lord. We only want him to take the things that we don't want. Mm -hmm. Well, God wants it all. Oh, yes. Yes. And, and, and here's why he deserves it all. My final point, verses 22 through 26. He remembers God's promise. Yes. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt in his father's house. And Joseph lived 110 years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children on the third generation. The third generation. Yes. The children also of Machiah, the sons of Manasseh, were brought mm -hmm. up, up upon Joseph's knees, which mm -hmm. meant that he got to hold yes. his great grandchildren. Yeah, yeah. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die. And God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land yes. and to the land which he sware to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. Well, Joseph is saying that because of my relationship with God, I will be remembered. Yes. yes. All right. Yes. Slow down, yeah, yeah, yeah. amen. That's one of the way that we help. Joseph is saying, because of his relationship with the Lord, mm -hmm. he'll be remembered. Yes. Now, now, now you got to examine your relationship that's right. That's right. with the Lord. That's right. Because that's how you're going to be remembered. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Oh, uh, there ain't so many amens up in here now. Some of the amens left. Because here it is. Can God trust you in the pit? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I'm working on that one. Amen. I wish I could say, man, it's some pits if I get put in, it might be a problem. Lord, Lord. It's some pits I get put in, it might be too much pressure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joseph was trusted in the pit. Before I say amen, can I be trusted in Potiphar's house? Lord. Lord. Now, now think about this. Now Potiphar was a very influential person. Yes, he was. So his wife had to look pretty good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, amen. Daughters, can you be trusted in a man's house that looks like your dream man? Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get it real. My brothers, can you be trusted <laughs> in a woman's house? Jesus. She might not have to cry right His children in here, y'all need to say amen. It's like, Lord, because some of us will be complicit. He's able to be trusted amen. with this woman that has all that she can offer him. And he says, my God has more. Amen. There's somebody trying to get your attention. And they got a lot of stuff. Can you be trusted yeah. in Potiphar's house yeah. with Potiphar's wife? Yeah. Because what he does, he doesn't leave. He runs. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Somebody need to be on the run this evening. <laughs> yeah. Running for your life. So, so, so the reason he's here is because he could be trusted uh -huh. in the pit when he didn't have nothing. Yes. He could be trusted in Potiphar's house when you think, I, I just got to come up. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, out, I'm out of the pit, right. and now I'm that dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am him. Yes. I can get what I want. Old dude gone. My. He ain't having his business. And I can come up up in here. I can be riding around in a new big zone. I can have all of the luxuries. Come on, somebody. Look what he gave up to have favor with the Lord. What are you willing to give up to have favor with the Lord? See, when your dream is deferred and it's not in action, I know what God said, Joseph is saying, but, but I don't see it happening. Can you trust God when you can't trace him? When there's no evidence there for blessing, but all I have are the birth, can I trust God then? Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say even in Potiphar's time, yeah. when you can have your pick of the litter. Just wait. Amen. And then if that's not enough, brother man get put in prison <laughs> for nothing. Yeah. I was already in the pit for nothing, Davina. I didn't do nothing to get put in the pit. Now, 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 now I'm in Potiphar's house. I tried to honor him and ran from his wife. Yeah. And now I'm in prison. Amen. Now I'm in prison. Yeah. And I hear God say, I'm going to give you favor yeah. in prison. Mm -hmm. and, and then you do what God tells you. Mm -hmm. You tell the baker and the butler yes. what God said. See, sometimes we got to tell folks some hard truth. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He looks over at the baker and he says, God's going to have your head. Right. And the bird's going to eat from it. Mm -hmm. But he tells the cup there, he says to the butler, mm -hmm. but as for you, God's going to release you from yeah, prison. Right, yeah. See, we all want to be the cup bearer. Yeah. But I got bad news up in here. Some bakers up in here. Yeah. And I'm not talking about somebody's last name. Yeah, that your behavior, <laughs> that in three days, in three days. <laughs> the birds shall eat from you. Yeah. So we make decisions today. <laughs> You're going to be the baker mm. or the butler. My God. See, the butler... Even though he got blessed, uh -huh. it took him two years to realize where the uh -huh. blessing came from. Uh -huh. Somebody, you already in your second year, it's time to go back Amen. to where you got your blessing yeah. from yeah. and return Amen. those things unto the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. 
A dream deferred is not a dream denied. <laughs> Until you wait three days too long. Yes. <laughs> Joseph right. had so many characteristics mm -hmm. that remind me of Jesus. Joseph was born from a barren womb. Yes. And Jesus is born from a virgin womb. Mm -hmm. Joseph was called the favored son of his father. Uh -huh. And Jesus is called the beloved son of his father. That's right. Joseph is lying on and put in prison. Come on, choir. We ain't got no holler the day we get out of here. Joseph is lying on and put in prison. I know a man. Jesus is lying on and taken from judgment home to judgment home. Joseph is placed in a pit. Jesus is placed in a broad tomb. Joseph would redeem his family, and Jesus will redeem mankind. I'm glad that the comparison stopped there because Joseph died being 110 years old. And when they involved him, he was put in a coffin in Egypt. His bones would be later carried and buried in the promised land. But I'm glad that that's where the comparison is. Because yes, I know a man that Isaiah talks about. He was despised and rejected of men. Yes, was. He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Yes. And yet, we hid as it were our faces from him. Yes. He was despised and esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet, we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God. Yes. He was wounded for our transgression. Yes, he was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was laid upon him. And with his stripes, I'm yet healed. Yeah. He was taken from prison and judgment hall to judgment hall. And who shall declare his generation? Yeah. For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of the people. Yeah. He was stricken. He made his grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, Neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yeah. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, and he had yet put him to grief. And when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his day, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Matthew said he died. Yeah. Mark said he died. Luke said he died. John declared he died. Every sermon it preached must say he died. But that's the dream that was deferred. Because in three days he yeah. rose again. And I'm glad that he rose in my life. Yeah. I'm glad that I have a new perspective to life today. I'm glad that old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. I stand and declare to you that a dream deferred is not a dream denied. Because one glad morning... I'm going to take the wings of the morning, and I will fly away. Yes. Because I know a man who died for me, but also a man who's coming back for a church yeah. without spot of rain. I know.